And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 3, from Sunday's Gospel, the second week of Lent. In the first week of Lent, the evangelist Mark describes how the Spirit compels Jesus into the desert. Similarly, Christians enter their own personal deserts, using the penitential season of Lent to reflect on attachments and temptations that impede on their relationship with God. The second week of Lent provides us a glimpse into the transformative power of relinquishing those attachments. In my Christian culture classes, we examine the lives of mystics. The great theologian Evelyn Underhill identified five stages a Christian mystic would experience on their way to the perfect union with God. Though my seniors are not Christian mystics, I challenge them to identify in what way they experience mysticism in their own lives. In these first two weeks, we are exposed to the first three stages, awakening, purification, and illumination. Our awakening comes as we bear the cross of ashes, coming into an awareness of a higher calling or challenge. We purify ourselves through the three pillars of Lent, fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. We now enter the transformative moment of illumination. Just as Jesus ascends the mountain, he is transformed or transfigured or illuminated in front of his disciples. We are illuminated as well in this season of Lent. The challenge we now face is entering the fourth stage, the dark night. It is not good enough that we are transformed or transfigured or illuminated but that we are called to transform others as well. Mark shows the disciples as excited, yet confused by the transfiguration. They want to stay in this place by making tents. That is not the calling of the Christian life. The temptation is to stay in this moment of illumination or transformation. But in order to truly be transformed, we must make a concerted effort to transform others as well. We must walk down the mountain. The dark night experience asks, are we good enough? Are we strong enough? This Lenten season provides us with that answer. Yes, you are. I invite you to reflect on the next three questions. Reflecting on the first week of Lent, how have you intentionally fasted, prayed, and given alms? How has your desert experience transformed you? What prohibits you from moving forward and transforming others, namely your family, friends, and or community? Thank you.